never be able to hear this, but ladies and gentlemen, we are now live talking about Gala Games, the first inaugural AMA with the man that's always in Google Meets meetings for some odd reason, Jason Brink, the path of the Berserker, the barbarian of Gala Games, and also the former CMO, if I looked at your LinkedIn, yes, I'm apparently a person that likes looking at LinkedIn's now, so yes, we're going to be touching base, the first official interview uh, for founders in the that crypto gaming show i know very creative name so how are you doing jason so uh, it's, it's good good man it's uh it's been one of, it's been one of those weeks it's been oh. one of those weeks but we're uh we're, we're slogging through it so is everything good. on fire is it fine you're with the coffee out you just there want, you just want me to use my fire button i know you <laughs> yeah. do. i know you do Dude, it's it's been it's been chaotic for a lot of people in not just yeah. crypto gaming but in crypto in general. There have been hacks all over the place. If you haven't already, there was this Kyber swap hack. It was a fifty million dollar hack on a layer one protocol, and the hacker literally said that I'm not giving you the money back unless you let me take over this company. And then he put his little telegram as at Kyber underscore director. Like he just put his, you know, his sack out there and it's, it's wild to see what's happening in the space right wow. now. But yeah, good thing you don't have to deal with that. Gala has been pretty crystal clear in terms of that kind of stuff. So, you know, good for you. Gala chain got to make sure that goes right. And that's why we're here because crypto gaming chains are becoming a thing. Everybody's trying to get these things out there. It might be that time. It might not be that time. So we're going to be touching base with Jason and talking about crypto gaming. Let's get into the first question, because you had been on, in the space probably before I was even born at this point. Was crypto around in the 90s, the 80s? <laughs> I've been I've been in the space for, for almost 10 years, for about 10 years now. Yeah, 10 years. So you were around when like Bitcoin was a sub 1K or something like that. Oh, don't even start with me on that shit. Did you, I, did I, you no, I didn't. Silk Road? I didn't. No, no, I didn't. I, I So so I was I was researching blockchain and and uh looking at everything from a very academic perspective but not actually ah. buying in at that point in time um because i was i was broke as hell and, and living in asia um you know so i just didn't buy any uh my first actual uh crypto purchase was some ethereum no i bought some stuff before ethereum i bought like some some litecoin um, I mine some random, random ass shit coins like GPU mining, um, way back in the day. But, but yeah, I, I did not get financially involved until much later. I mean, GPU mining is expensive. Well, now, nowadays it is. Back now then it, it is. Wasn't. Back then there was like, nobody yeah. was doing it. My, like my card was like this big. It was just like a normal shitty little tiny, um, you know, crappy NVIDIA normal graphics card. That's fair enough. I mean, when I got into crypto in 2020, Bitcoin was at like $7,000 and I faded it until it hit like 30K. And then I was like, oh, wow, what a great price point. So it, everybody's got that story. But that's not why we're here. We're here because crypto gaming uh, from its infancy back in 2017 has gone a long way. I, I mean, Gallo's been around since what, 2019, something like that? Yeah, that's yeah. when it was founded. Founded in 2019, and right now we're in 2023. It's been four years. And from what yeah. I've seen in your past AMAs, Gala Chain has been developed since somewhere around 2020, the initial idea. 2020, for it. yeah. Yeah, I, I'm obsessive with this chain for some reason. But that's good. You should be. I, I'm obsessive Fantastic. over crypto gaming in general, right? Because, like, you, you got to hyper focus. So, where do you see the entire industry today versus two years ago when everybody was super hyped for crypto in general? Like, what are the big differentiators? Um, two years ago, there wasn't anything. People were hyped about it, but it was all vaporware. Um, you know, we had, we had games that we were working on and we were building people had very, very unrealistic expectations about the delivery timeline for those games, myself included. Okay. Because again, I'm not a game, I'm not a game developer. You're personally. a barbarian. Yeah. It, very much so. Right. I break things. Um, but you know, people had, had these very unrealistic expectations for the delivery timeline of games. There were tons and tons of projects out there, you know, and this is this is just a copy paste of, of the previous bull cycles where, you know, it was ICOs and, you know, just like like random things. Somebody would spin up, make some, you know, 8-bit sprites and say, oh, I'm making a game. And then people would be like, OK, have some money. On chain game. Um, and, it, it, and, and then I'm not 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 commenting on that um nice try though nice try um but but i uh, you know if it, things were very ridiculous tons of money flowing around not a lot of product right now there's a ton of product out there there's a lot of really great games 
Um, and I don't want to be the guy that just comes on and talks about our games, although I, I feel that we have some amazing games out there. But there's other games that are not ours either that are, you know, pretty awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm super, super stoked to see the state of the industry and see the fact that we're getting to the point where we have products that people can come in and play without friction. And that's really important. Yeah, I mean, back then I, I had to go through a hoop of different obstacles to try to get into it. Nowadays, no, I mean, they, they do those custodial wallets where you sign in and they make a wallet for you. I'm pretty sure Gal is getting to that point where you just sign into the website and then there's a wallet just made for you and then you can link something later on. You can link something later on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're finally there. Uh, obviously, transfer codes and the whole authy is really annoying for most people. So that might be something that should be optional. But we're getting there. We're getting there, which I'm really excited Getting closer. About. We're getting, getting closer. closer. Getting very close. And by the way, talking about getting close, guys, we got to smash the like button because we got to break the all-time high views. We got 150 people on the last live. It actually went kind of crazy. Uh, does... We got a question over here. Let's, let's give some AMA questions here. Does okay. Bender think joining T Neo Tokyo would be good for Gallup? He thinks it might be good for exposure community. What do you think about Neo Tokyo? Who, who, who's that question from? Uh, this guy called B Maximus. B Maximus. Yeah. Um, B Maximus uh, does. I, I've seen B Maximus around. I am. Uh, I, I'm. I'm somewhat. I don't want to go so far as to say I'm skeptical. I'm not skeptical. What I think is, and I actually had a really good conversation with Elio, um, Elio Trades last week. Um, we had a actually Monday, I guess it was Monday. Um, feels like last week, um, but we had a, we had a good conversation. And what I think is interesting is I think that there's there's with Neo Tokyo there's two different things. There's what the founders are attempting to do, and what the community is doing. I think what the founders are attempting to do is to create something that unifies crypto gaming and brings things together and is a great opportunity for a bunch of founders to discuss and, you know, things like that. Um, and I think that the community of it is very much into early investments, you know, win Roy, you know, moonshot sort of thing. And I think that those two things, while they're not incompatible with one another completely, they do take away from one another to a certain extent. So, so for example, well, what they're doing may be super cool, um, having a bunch of Roy boys in there screaming about, you know, the next moonshot and, you know, having it end up being some stupid pump and dump thing takes away from that. Um, so, so that's my thing. I, I, I obviously don't have a problem with it. I do actually have one of the Neo Tokyo uh, citizens. Um, I'm not active in the discord, but I do have one. Oh. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at deciding whether or not to be, to get active in that community. And it would, would love to see what, uh, what people think. Yeah. I I've spoken to people that own Neo Tokyo's and people that don't own Neo Tokyo's on the fence. For the most Ooh. part, the conversation always delves down to, are these founders actually going to be spending time on the discord active? Probably not only because they've got a million other things to do in a million. Dude, I've got so <laughs> much crap to do. I like if, if, if you look at my slack right now, I have in, in just my slack. No, I'm sorry. In just, um, so we have multiple slacks in our company, but my slack, I have, uh, 74, um, mentions that I have not yet reviewed. So I that's where so I've been tagged in some <laughs> shit that I need to go talk about, go look at. And I, I am not doing so at the moment because, you know, I'm here talking to you or because I'm doing whatever. I don't have time to hang out inside random discords and, and chat with people. Hey, but you own a new uh, Tokyo. You just got to type hi. And then have the little I, I, I do. I do. <laughs> but, but, but that's the, that's the thing is that, is that what I want to do. And, and this is what I've actually, uh, you know, this is what I, I proposed is um, I'm interested in, you know, for example, taking a community like that. It doesn't have to be Neo Tokyo, okay? It could be any any group of gaming developers out there and hold a hackathon on Galachain for them. Let them see what Galachain can do and see how Galachain works for them so that they can you know, get involved in that. That's what I would love to do. Give people access to, to technology and help other people build. Because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And I think that... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know Becker, but Elio um, talking to him, it was pretty clear um, that he he does want to see the industry grow, and that would be one way to help that happen. 
Yeah, excellent. That's a great response. I mean, at the end of the day, you're not the marketing guy, right? You're the president no. of blockchain. You love blockchain. I and that's why I do. Here, I love right? blockchain. This is all about, I'm actually getting ready to start my own uh, show and podcast. Really? That is not, yeah, that's not focused on, on gaming, but is focused on talking to people in different industries about blockchain. So for example, taking somebody, um, you know, a, gr a great example that I, I use when I talk about this is taking somebody who's an anesthesiologist. Let's say that they're the top anesthesiologist in the entire world. And, you know, I want to know the things that they know that I don't know. So what are the unknown unknowns about anesthesiology? Um, a great example of this was when my my wife uh, gave birth to our, our daughter, okay? They gave her an epidural, okay? Typically they give her, they, they're supposed to give you like one shot and then, and then it numbs you from basically the waist down, just cuts everything out. They had to give her three, okay? And then, rather than having it fade after a couple hours, which is what it's supposed to do, she was completely numb to the point where we thought she had like spinal damage um, for like 15 hours. Wow. Okay. And the reason for that is that the stuff that they injected her with had been frozen in, in a delivery van. And so the medicine was actually bad okay and wow. had gotten frozen which made it much less effective which meant that they had to triple dose her okay and so something like that like having blockchain for supply chain blockchain for logistics blockchain for managing uh you know for for recording temperature of an item as it moves from place to place which is something i've worked on previously um like that's a great use for that and that's only something that i would find out by talking to an anesthesiologist and seeing these sorts of things take place so i'm gonna i'm gonna start talking to some people about yeah stuff like you this. should name the podcast did you know and then you just have a bunch of founders out there interview them people that are way smarter i, I would love to yeah combined yes exactly yeah, that's 100%. what i want that's, that's what i do with I, this I right that. that's why i have you on <laughs> the, i don't know the about big smarter. brain the here big brain. come on i have a big head i have a giant head I have, a, I have a gigantic cranium too. Check this out, right? <laughs> anyway, yeah, you, let, let's get you, back to the crypto kidding. gaming stuff. Let's get back to the crypto gaming stuff. I'm going way off. So which sector of crypto gaming do you think people are sleeping on in terms of use cases? I mean, like we know about the whole buying and selling on marketplaces, but what would you say is something that like people never talk about that you think would be an awesome use case that more crypto games should be using? So it's a little bit, it's a little bit difficult um, because a lot of, a lot of crypto games, um, you know, are based on on EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine, right? Um, a lot of the L2s are based on EVM. So you have like Polygon is a, is an EVM chain. Um, you know, Immutable uh, has has EVM, uh, you know, compatible components. Uh, Avalanche is, is EVM based with their, their C chain and stuff like that. Um, a lot of these chains are doing things that are b basically based in solidity. Okay, so you can uh, you can execute bytecode on on your uh, on your 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 execute your smart contract on these EVM chains. The problem is is that the business logic that you can include in that is very limited. Okay, because you can't put very much in that contract. It tends to you know crap things up you know pretty quickly. I think that what when you look at gaming that is is actually on chain, and you look at something like Gala Chain. Okay, look at what, if you go visit the, the Spider Tanks channel, you can see how much is happening on chain in Spider Tanks, um, and it is super cool. So I think that using, you know, something that is much more robust than the EVM compatible stuff out there, like Gala Chain, right? Gala Chain is a good example. Um, I think using that is going to really open up possibilities for developers. Yeah, so would you say that our big issue right now is we are obsessed with Solidity? I know Solana, Cosmos SDK chains, they're using Rust right now. And then right. Gala, I think, is using like Hyperledric Fabric or something crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, so, well, you, a lot of people don't hear of HLF because um, it's, not, uh, it's not a sexy... It chain. sounds so cool. <laughs> okay, but it's it, it and it's it's enterprise grade. The idea behind it is that it is an enterprise grade chain, and you typically use it for, um, for for doing things within a business. Okay, so it's used by um, 
oh, what the hell is the name? I, there's a there's a there's a gigantic mining company that does copper mining. They use it for for tracking all of their samples. Um, they you their De Beers uses HLF for tracking diamonds and the the um, origin of diamonds. Walmart uses HLF for the the tracking of all of their um, their logistic shipments for trucks. Um, I think in Canada, I don't know if they do that across the entire United States. But my, my point is, is that typically speaking, the people who use HLF are gigantic enterprise grade things. And they're not um, sort of the types who go and play in public GitHub repos and things like that, because they take it, they fork it, they put it in their own private repo and they do all of their development from there and nobody ever sees it because like, honestly, who gives a shit what blockchain Walmart uses, right? No one. Like, Walmart cares, okay, but but nobody else cares. And because HLF doesn't have, you know, sort of like token associated with it, there isn't anyone pushing this news out, okay? Because like you look at you look at Polygon and Polygon's fantastic. This is not a criticism, but if you look at Polygon and there's one person that says like, "Oh yes, I use Polygon." There's a press release uh, they're very good at this business development logo. They're, good at marketing. Yeah. Picture, they're very good at marketing it, right? HLF doesn't do that because they have no incentive to. It doesn't matter. You know, people use HLF all the time and nobody ever hears about it. You can see a bunch of HLF type stuff happening in some blockchains, um, some blockchain projects, but they don't usually talk about it because it's not uh, it's not a big selling point for a lot of people. What we've started doing here and this is really cool is actually decentralizing the way that hlf works by pushing some of these functions across the nodes which is something that is going to be happening here pretty soon and we even actually have uh a full um blueprint a gala ecosystem blueprint that's going to be released before the end of the year that has roadmaps and has tons of information good bit of technical information did you just um, say like roadmap a, that's dangerous I did. It's I very did. dangerous. Yeah, just, uh, okay. So are you um, trying to make the boring part of crypto a little bit more public? Is that what it kind of is? It, it's it's not the boring part of crypto. It's the it's the part of crypto that honestly matters, man. Um, it's always you know, the boring things that matter is what I'm it's trying the, to say. The, the boring things definitely matter. I mean, you know, we've talked about this before with like TCP IP, right? You know, you, do you know what TCP IP is? No idea. You have no idea, right? No. But every single device that you use that connects to the internet uses TCP IP to connect, okay? It's the base layer protocol that all of your electronic communications are based on, and you have no freaking idea what it does. But every single time you touch your phone, you touch the computer, this conversation that we're having right now is all happening over this protocol. This is the way that blockchain should be. The problem is, is that what blockchain has done for the last decade is they've done a fantastic job of making blockchain absolutely, completely unapproachable by talking about how great it is that it is blockchain. I see. So at some point, Do you, you would like to be of the band camp that screw the whole work a crypto game. We're just a Web3 We're product. a game, man. We're, We're a, a game, freaking man. game. It's yeah. a game. It's a game. Come play. Come play The Walking Dead. Have fun. That's it. It's not on a crypto game tier. It's just a game. Yeah. That uses yeah, crypto for like something. And I, and, and I don't give a shit about tier lists. That's not <laughs> how that stuff works. Okay? You saw That's it, not, didn't you? you I did. You know. I saw the tier list. I, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I actually, I actually, so, so the funny thing is that was, that was you, right? With Hustlepedia? No, no, that was, no, that, was that was Stash. Stash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stash. So, so here's the thing. I don't necessarily disagree with him from that perspective. Okay, he took the Walking Dead Empires and I think he put it at a C. Um, and his rationale for putting it at a C was um, nobody's talking about it. It's Which totally is totally correct. Totally true. Um, and that, that's a definitely a thing that we have to solve. But the problem is, is that that what you get there is you get this melding of different things because it's no longer about a game. It's not, hey, is this a good game? Is this a fun game? Are we having fun? I mean, to be honest, The Walking Dead Empires is a persistent playtest at this point in time. It's not actually a fully released game. It's like a, hey, this is what's there right now. Go play it and have fun, right? So it shouldn't be an S-tier game at this point because it's no not sense. even done. And we know it's not done. And we never said it was done, right? Um, but but what's interesting, though, is that you're, you begin lumping in not just the game, but the game, the perception of the game, a token, okay? And this whole other pile of stuff that doesn't actually really 
fit in the is this a cool game question. You're being way too um, logical. I know, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll just have to say say more wrecked to the moon. Uh, push the, <laughs> exactly. There you, you know, go. Have, is have the some, token some, doing well? You know, yeah. Yay, go. number go up. <laughs> um you know it's it's so that's that's kind of the the direction that I, I i look at this from so hey that makes a lot of sense and and talking about moon boys listen i've uh i've been seeing a couple of leaks that have been happening lately and apparently your ceo benefactor has a uh, been uh, getting a little bit excited lately some would say yeah, saying has. that we have apparently 50 that's a lot of pr worthy announcements that are going to yeah. be coming uh, now is this are you gearing up for a gala chain debut everybody's going to be using it i know it's already live but like the it's already real live. thing where a lot of people are beginning to use this you have a bunch of companies i know that there was a pr firm that you're now working with i forgot the name it was something with a d something group uh, but is that coming because because the roadmap's coming the white paper's coming end of yeah, year road, roadmap all of that stuff's coming in terms of these announcements you're going to start seeing them but what what you're going to start seeing is that uh, that people are building, okay? That different projects are are using Gala Chain. You know, we have a full um, business development group that's out there right now, talking to different companies about using Gala Chain. I have had dozens of meetings, um, you know, over the last few weeks with VCs. Uh, and different firms talking about integrating Gala Chain into their deal flow. So, you know, what does it look like to say, you've got a company, you have invested in this company, this company has AWS expenses, or they're paying for whatever, how about instead of that, how about we go ahead and do something on Gala Chain for them and let them spin out their own node network? Um, you know, there's, there's tons and tons of that sort of stuff going on. So, so when he throws around the number 50, um, it, it, it's it's it depends on how you want to look at it um if we if we were to look at it from the way that crypto projects typically make announcements um i think it's more than 50. um oh. but i think that i think that um well no but that's that's kind of my point though is that typical typically crypto projects make bullshit announcements that don't actually mean anything every little thing yeah. so so exactly so so that wasn't me saying like oh it's more than 50 because i don't consider it more than 50. um but the, the, there's a, there's a ton of stuff that is being built that depends on Gala Chain right now, and I'm I'm looking forward to people seeing all of that as we go forward. Yeah, and I look forward to also yelling at them and forcing them to be on the show as well because that's just kind of my thing, right? Just yelling at people, <laughs> getting the word out. Well, but that's there. the thing is that that, yeah. that a lot of the people that are building on Gala Chain. Uh, no, no offense. They're not going to listen to you because they don't <laughs> care because they're not crypto degens. They're people that are just building shit. Um, Dude, like the that's the problem. Like when you when you rate the Walking Dead Empires at that tier, it's like none of the people in the Walking Dead Empires like will hop on AMAs or anything. They're just game developers. They don't care about any of this like PR stuff. They're just building. Well, awesome so actually, I I I do kind of I do kind of beat Zach up a little bit for that. Zach yeah. is the the studio head for Ember, and he's the guy behind the Walking Dead Empires. Um, and and he's an awesome he's an awesome dude. Um. And it's it's uh, I, I would love to have him get on AMAs with you. Um, really? And he, he could definitely talk about stuff. Yeah, because we've got all sorts of stuff coming up with with the Walking Dead Empires. We have man shit that I can't even I can't even say. But, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's really cool to see the way that that game is developing and, and uh, you know, the ability for uh, people to get involved in that uh, the economy with uh you know the various types of uh, there's a, there's a token that's going to be rolling out for the Walking Dead empires. Um, did you just say you know, a token? There's, there's, I did, I did, yeah. So you're going for dead? Um, huh? That's actually happening. That's actually happening. Yeah, there you go. a lot of people were like, "Oh, we only want Gala token." Maybe you can explain. No, to it doesn't. Yeah, I'd love to explain. That, yeah. Sure. So wh why not just do everything in Gala? Okay, there's a couple reasons. The first is is that Gala isn't a gaming token okay now i recognize that a lot of people think it is a lot of people are like what no gal is not a gaming token gal is an l1 token okay gal is a protocol token now yes we have used it in games we started our ecosystem building games but the actual token itself the utility of it goes far beyond gaming okay so that's the first point the second point is that the emission of gala 
okay? And the way that a, a business works around uh, a game, okay? If you have a game, okay, why do companies have games? Why, why, why make a game? They want money. They want money, right? So you want money. You do a thing, like you, even you, okay? You do this, okay, because it's fun. You do it because it's interesting. Okay, but, but also money. at the end of the day, yeah. you'd be like, "Well, it'd be really nice if if I had some money, right? I would really like I don't some money." Go make my, yeah, yeah, exactly, right. So, so this is why companies make games. Okay, now, why do people play, play and earn games? Oh, they play and earn games because they want to make money. <laughs> they want to make money, <laughs> and, right? Dude, everybody's okay, intrinsic thoughts is always like. How do exactly. I produce it's, it's, it's a very, very mercenary uh, approach here. So now here, this is this is why this is important. Okay, now let's say for a moment that we have a game. We'll call it, you know, the Walking Dead Empires. Okay, now if you have this game and people put Gala into the game, okay, now we have two groups of people that hope to get money out of the game: the developers who have to do things like you know eat uh <laughs> pay for their families not be homeless and players okay who expect to get something right and here's the problem is that the in the input is coming from the players the output half of it or whatever a number less th less than the input is going to the output which means that you have on this side a constantly diminishing return while something is going to the developers okay so you always get out something that is less than gets put in because that's how entropy works okay now if you and the reason that you can't get more out is because this game here in the middle does not make gala it cannot change the distribution of gala it cannot increase the supply of gala you can't put in one gala here and then get two gala out on the bottom doesn't work right so it's one gala and then 50 percent of a gala and then 50 percent of a gala or whatever right so that sucks it doesn't work well for anyone we have seen this with some of these games so you um, don't believe in play to earn it's not that i don't believe in 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 play and earn i think that there's two ways that it can work the first way is that you have your own token on a game right for a game and this is the same way if somebody were to come in and build on gala chain let's say you wanted to make uh you know the jesus martinez uh extravaganza game okay you come in and you build that game you're going to want your own token you're not going to want to use gala now if you build it on gala chain because gala chain rocks <laughs> okay and can yeah. eat most l1 and l2's lunch um then that's fantastic but you're still going to want to have your own token in that game you're not going to want to be forced to use only gala okay so right. why should every other game that we produce only use gala then on top of that so if you have your own token then the emission can be ba based on activities within that game or within you know on number of users or the uh, virality of the game, the number of new users. There's all sorts of it's different flexible, metrics that yeah. you could use. Yeah, very, very flexible. And if something isn't working, it's relatively easy to tweak, okay? However, if you're just stuck using Gala, you can't. It's always going to be crappy. Now, if the other way that it can work is if you have a game like um, Poker Go Play, okay, where you have a pool, okay, and then a chunk of this pool is what gets distributed to people at the top of a leaderboard, okay? That can work. But the the thing that everybody always wants where it's like, I come play a game for 10 minutes and somebody gives me a pile of money. Like that shit never works anywhere. Um, and and it definitely doesn't work if it's you're, if you're only- yeah. It's <laughs> always, yeah, it's always terrible. That makes a lot so. of sense, yeah. I, uh, I, I think a lot of the problem was like in the beginning of the year, you guys were saying that you were going to use Gala token for everything and people got super hyped, but then you changed it. It's a lot of it. I feel like is you, you talk to your economist and you were like, is it possible? And he's like, maybe, but then well, you, no, you it, used it and then it just wasn't possible. And then we saw spider was, tanks, right? It, it, it was, well, it was spider. Ugh, so many things to talk about there that I probably can't talk about. Um, it, it was one of those things where, uh, people had a certain belief, certain people said things that maybe shouldn't have been said. And then um, what you end up with is like, a, okay, this is the thing that we're going to do. And then, and then 
that thing doesn't work. And so we end up having to recreate new things. Um, it's fun. It's fun. Yes. Is, That's why is, you're a barbarian, right? You like breaking this things is, over I, and over. I am. I am the I am the fixer. That is. Oh, that you're is the fixer. Job. Okay, that makes sense. I don't. I'm not so the, the one. Other that, people are the ones that break it. I'm not pointing any fingers you don't take at anyone. Accountability. But I do not. No, no, it's not. It, that, that is that is not a good way to word that. Mm. But um, I am not. Uh, typically speaking, I am the one that comes in after somebody else has done a thing. Okay. And saying, "Hey, guys, let's do this a different way." It makes That's... sense why they put you on for AMAs because you're the one that typically speaking does things correctly. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, we look at the live stream now. We broke our all-time high viewership. We got over 150 oh, people go. in here. You guys have to smash the like button right now so more people can look at this shiny yeah. man in the AMA with the confetti. Let's go. I have so many questions. You're you're giving way too much value. This is like actually insane right now. And I mean, you just mentioned that this is an L1 coin. Everybody and their mother keeps talking about Gala's the moonshot. That's the crypto gaming renaissance. Can we like take a dial back here? Like, are, are we not a crypto gaming coin anymore? What, what's the focus with Gala? Well, so, are, have you overextended? Like everybody keeps saying, no, what's going no, no, no. on? So there's there's a couple things. The okay. first is, and I'm watching Slack, so I'm getting like multiple multiple messages here. No worries. Um, hold on, let me let me look at this. Uh, I also have a bit of a like a TikTok brain, so. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. You have TikTok brain. I have I have Slack brain. It's fine. <laughs> um, so the 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 way that the way that this works is that. Gala started out focusing on gaming, okay? And the reason that we focus on gaming is because the demands of focusing on gaming, gaming has much higher demands than pretty much any other industry in terms of transaction throughput, okay? So, for example, okay, um, you take uh, a game like Farmville, okay? Farmville had something like 34 million users uh, daily at its peak. That's absurd. Okay. okay, it's absurd, right? Now, of those users, okay, 34 million users, how many of those users, how many transactions or, tra or how many blockchainable events can a user create in a day playing a game? A lot. Dozen, dozens or hundreds sometimes, right? You know, if, if every time you're harvesting a crop, it's a transactable event, then, you know, how many transactions I or every time you buy crops, gems yeah. or every time you spend gems or, you know, whatever. Right. Um, if you were to take that volume and throw it at pretty much any L1 or L2, it would catch on fire and die. Is it because of the whole business logic thing you were talking about e earlier with EVMs? It's a big part of it. It's a big part of it. See, because, you know, then you have things like when people talk about how many transactions per second, right? Transaction per second calculations are almost always how many blank blocks can I write at a time? How many blocks full of zeros can I push to chain, right? <laughs> to get to literally TPS. Yeah, I put that on the thumbnail. Yeah, You're it, talking about it. it. I remember yeah, that. It's, it, it's like, it, and, and, and it's like, okay, fine like congratulations and and the the analogy that i've used in the past is it's like the question you know people ask well how many tps can you do it's the it's like how big can you build a building okay like you can build a building as big as your resources will allow okay so you have things like you know a, a house you may have a, a a small house that's made out of cinder blocks okay it's not a very big building Okay, it's a small building because you don't have a lot of resources. You also have things like the Burj Khalifa, which is like massive to the point where your ears pop three times going up in the elevator, right? Like something like that, clearly more resources. Okay. How many resources would we need for 1 million TPS? Uh, I don't know the exact number of, 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 you know, things that would have to be deployed for that. But the point is, is that it is scalable. It is both yeah. horizontally and vert vertically scalable. And if you need more transactions, you, you know, take, for example, uh, let's say you need an entirely new class of transactions. You just spin up a new channel, push the transactions through that channel, um, you know, and, and, and resource that appropriately. You know, if you have another transaction channel that doesn't ha use a ton of transactions, um, and in fact, you can look at the way at the, the way that the block explorer is, is you're not, with, with Ethereum, you have blocks constantly, right? Um, no matter what. 
with with uh, Gala Chain, you have blocks and channels when blocks are required in channels. Okay, so it's not just a uh, thing where you, you know you're having a block every single second, no matter what's going on. Okay, because in Ethereum, mining that block is the transaction at the end of the at the you know if there's nothing else going on, there's always something else going on. But if there wasn't, then that would be the way it is. With uh, Gala Chain. Excuse me, I have I'm massively congested right now, so I can't breathe for hell Incredible. right now. Um, yeah. But um, with uh, with 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 Gala Chain, you only have a block when there's a transaction that needs to be pushed through. Okay, because you're not arbitrarily, you know, providing staking rewards essentially. Um, That's so interesting. You know, so, so like technically, the chain kind of halts itself until the next transaction comes until the next thing comes into it. And then it's like, Oh, okay. Got to do a thing. Now let's do the thing. And, and just go look at the, the way that the explorer explorer.gala.com, which is just ugly as shit and needs to be reworked. And we have There's a competition a, though. We have a million gala or founders node bounty on a better explorer. Founders um, we're, we're, we're working on one as well, but if somebody wants to just, uh, spin what up, um, you know, pulling from our, uh, or our APIs knock yourselves out and there is a there's a bounty on that but um yeah so if you go to, to explorer.gala.com you can see exactly how that works you can see some chains have lots and lots of transaction or some channels have lots of transactions some don't and that's why you talked on that AMA about fluid transactions where some chains are going to go really fast and some yep. chains are going to want to go really slow. Was there an explanation for like why a chain would want to be slow on purpose versus fast? Well, look at something like Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. Bitcoin doesn't need to have a lot of transactions. Well, nowadays, okay. with ordinals. <laughs> well, this is a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we need to not have that conversation. Um, but, but. You know, Bitcoin, generally speaking, before that, you know, particularly, never mind. It's thing, higher than Ethereum gas um, nowadays, yeah. It, you know, before that, um, you know, Bitcoin didn't need a ton of transactions. Because what Bitcoin was doing is is for, typically speaking, fairly large transactions um, and, and settlement, right? Um, whereas if you have something that's a, you know, high throughput gaming channel, then you're going to have a lot of transactions. Yeah, it makes sense. And um, there, there's always this like talk, you know, Vitalik Buterin back in the day talked about the blockchain trilemma where we all have three big problems. And a big one that, you know, crypto keeps falling on is security. I mean, Ronin Network yeah. got hacked for God knows how much. And I love the people at Ronin. They kind of came yeah, back pretty strong yeah. after that. Yeah. Uh, but um, I mean, are, are we scared of, you know, too much throughput creating some kind of exploit? No, 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 no. not, not in that sense. Yeah. How does that work? Um, well, no, those are two totally separate topics. Um, the, the, the Ronin hack specifically happened for two reasons. Um, one, because uh, if I remember correctly, it was, it was a signers, PDF. Right? It was a PDF that was sent to one of their engineers that had access to a wallet. Okay. okay. And um if I remember correctly, and again, I may not remember correctly, I could be totally wrong here. Um, but if I remember correctly, um, what it was, what was breached was the collateral wallet that hold held the ETH for the wrapped ETH that was on Ron, Ronin. So people would take take Ethereum. So that was like the liquidity, would, the collateral. Exactly. They would wrap it, and then they'd have you know wrapped ETH on Ronin. And then they would do their stuff in the marketplace there with lower gas fees because Ronin's an L2, right? Then um, with that, that wallet with the wrapped ETH was the thing that was breached. Um, and so they lost the collateral, essentially. Yeah, from what I recall, there was something like there were a certain amount of people that needed to sign to do a transaction or something. And then they got access to like five of nine. I forget how many exactly it was. It's been a long yeah, time. It, but something like that happened and they drained it is pretty much what yeah, happened. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and so, you know, this is one of the reasons why we, with Gala Chain, we use burning bridges. We don't wrap any assets at all. So you like burning um, bridges is what Burning Gala's bridges, saying. yeah. Okay. Correct. So so what that means is that if you bridge Gala to Ethereum um, or from, or for, to Gala Chain from Ethereum, in either direction, those tokens are burnt off of the original chain. So... There's no collateral wallet to, um, you know, to, to hang so on to. So if it gets exploited, it doesn't matter because there's nothing there. Yeah, there is no wallet. Good. Like, it's just yeah. you doing your thing. Uh, let, let's talk about bridging. 
Because sure. uh, I think one of the first functions, I, I'm not sure founders nodes are doing this, but someone is doing this. Validators are doing this. Bridging is going to become a thing to get into Gala Chain. Yep. I am molding every time I have to go on that website on Gala Games and I have to throw my Ethereum to Gala Chain. I have to pay like 20 bucks. It used to be 10 yep. bucks. I remember that. It uh, used to be 10, but but yeah. to, to, to be clear, the reason, the reason that it went up is because what we found is that sometimes 10 would be enough to cover it. Okay. But a lot of times, because we're the ones that have to actually pay the Ethereum on the other side. Okay. So when you bridge out from Gala Chain, you are using Gala on Gala Chain. Somebody still has to go take that Gala, convert it over to ETH on Ethereum and use that to power to the transactions that write uh, to Ethereum. Okay. Um, what we found is that sometimes you know, $10 would cover it. However, sometimes it'd be like 14 bucks, 16 bucks, 18 bucks. And it was, you know, pretty, it, it was, it was a problematic thing. You're losing too um, much money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, it's like, okay, we're, we're trying to do this. We were losing money. That's not a good thing. And you can't just now, like let them do it themselves. No. Cause the problem, the problem is, is what happens is this, is that people will go initiate a bridge transaction Okay, say I want to pay the lowest amount possible because everyone wants to pay the lowest amount and then bitch when it doesn't hit the chain in a timely fashion. Like I bridged from to Ethereum from Gala Chain 20 minutes ago and it hasn't come through. Well, it's like, well, dumbass, you cranked it all the way down to, you know, 30 cents. And so it's going to take two and a half days for it to clear the mempool. And it has nothing to do with Even us. Even if it does, right? I don't think it'll get that it, 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 no, it probably won't. But the thing is, is people still try that shit. And so, so, and then they bitch about it and it becomes our Should fault. Should you now, give them in the this option case, to do that? I, I don't think so because, um, I mean, on one hand, it, I, it doesn't bother me per se. Um, but on the, get, hold on one second. Um, you good. In an in interview. Yeah, this one's lasting fucking crazy long. I have so many questions. You're, you're okay, I might actually, yeah. I might actually have to. You got something to do? Might have to have something to do. All good, all good. I think people extracted plenty of value from this. This may well, be I... the ultimate gala interview. <laughs> it's been, it's been, it's been a lot of, uh, it's been a lot of stuff, but what other, what other questions do you have? I have, I have a few more minutes. Yeah. I mean, like for the most part, you know, founders know people, they want to know, like, what are you going to use our nodes for there? Is it, is it like, Oh, founders cool? nodes are, yes, it's very cool. I'm super stoked about, about the future of founder nodes. And I can't wait for people to see what we have in the, uh, the roadmap for that. Um, cause there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that and the roadmap's that, that coming next been, month. Uh, hold on. Today is the 30th. Yes. Next yes. month. So I, I told somebody something was going to happen by the end of the month earlier today. And the I'm no like, wait, thing. hold on, yeah, hold on. It's not by the end of the month. It's by the end of next month um, because the end of the month is like tomorrow and, and yes. that's not happening. Um, but my brain was already in December. This year has gone by crazy fast. All right. All right. I got one more question. I know you got to go. So we've got okay, a donation me, from Enzo here. By the way, thank you for the five. He says he works in a small studio developing a Web3 game. What's the nice. best way to connect with your team for a potential gala, gala collaboration? So what I would do is we actually have a team right now that is working closely with, oh man, this is so cool. I wish I could show you guys this, who is working very closely with um, a bunch of different game teams. So let's do this. Uh, go follow me on Twitter at bitbenderbrink. Okay, maybe you can throw that in the uh, the, the the notes. Uh, that would I would appreciate that, Jesus. Um, but at Bitbender gotcha. Brink on Twitter, um, send me a DM and tell like say that you were the one that that reached out. And what I will do is I will connect you with our our team that is working on bringing people in. We also have, I believe, coming up this uh, this coming month. I believe we have a uh, a hackathon which we would love to get more. Uh, more people into. I, I'm doing an interview later today with uh, Forged and Crypto. Um, his team were the ones that won the last hackathon. So I'm Nate. super. Uh, he's, he's he's amazing. He's amazing. So we 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 he his team won the last hackathon on Gala Chain, and they made a really cool thing. So um, of course they were to a uh, yeah this awesome team. But we also had the Fuzzles guys in there. We had we had a lot of uh, a lot of yeah around? yeah of course. 
Of, well, a different team. So it was taken over by the community, and they're oh. uh, it's it's taken over by Western Monk, Gingerbread Man, and uh, really uh, Dutchies, um, Universal Dutchies. Um, yeah, they they're doing like really cool stuff. So I'm very very happy to see that. I've got to and talk to I'm, them. Thank you, dude. Definitely, definitely reach out to them. And I'm I've been uh, like I'm supporting them as much as I possibly can because I freaking love that stuff. So. The world domination ai i fucking love it back in the day we used to just play around with it which i gpt must be so much better too with how oh, it's, AI has it's developed. yeah they've they've they you're gonna like what they're working on awesome well i mean this is gonna be pretty much it jason's wrap with time we've been here for 45 minutes i i think this might literally be the best interview we've done yeah i mean the, the level of quality here by the way gala it's not just a token, guys. It is doing Hyperledger Fabric. It's doing really cool things. Let's let's start calling it a Layer 1 coin. Thank you pretty much. Please. Yes, I'll be the guy. I'll, I'll make it mainstream. When I'm doing the little crypto Do gaming it. coin thing, I'm going to make an L1 tier, and I'm just going to slap Gala on it every time. Boom. <laughs> Until people Boom. get upset Perfect. about it. They're like, it's a crypto gaming coin. You don't Hell know it. what you're talking about, but it's okay. It's all good. But thank hey, you for joining hey. the show. We'll have you on in the future. You're the first inaugural guest of this banger show. 170 people in here. Till the next time. Y'all, thank you guys. Stay classy, confetti, and that.